you don't need to be able to run a marathon to play table tennis really you need to be fit you need to have good fitness levels you need to be able to perform for a two three hour training session um but i think yeah speed and explosive power i think is the most important at the high level um and yeah as i said just endurance is a given and Speed and explosive power, I think, is the big biggest difference between the top players and the lower lower standard players. Welcome to the Balls and Owls show. Uh, today we're going to be discussing fitness in table tennis. I've got a couple of superheroes here, super strength, as you can see. Uh, uh, two guests with us, but before I introduce them, please may I introduce my co-hosts. Hi, I'm Ali Pearson from Everything Table Tennis. I'm Ed Lynn, the owner of ELTT, and I currently run the Birmingham Table Tennis Academy. Amazing. And I'm Ellie Barati, and alongside me today... I'm Charlotte Carey. Um, I'm the current Welsh champion, six times Welsh champion. I play professionally in Sweden and Spain, but I'm currently stuck at home due to lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> like all of us. Yeah. Go ahead, Phil. I'm Phil Cooker, Impact Fitness Training. I run boot camp sessions and schools, office, I do wellness sessions as well for offices and do sport coaching. I'm also the table tennis coach and fitness coach for Draco Table Tennis Club. And as of last week, I started doing um, fitness sessions for the England junior squad. So I was um, happy to get involved with that one. That's wonderful. Fantastic. Awesome stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming on the show. So we're going to just uh, kick it off with uh, Ed in the first question. Okay, really simple question, uh, Phil. How, how important is uh, physicality in, in table tennis? So, you know, fitness and strength and, and various other aspects. And feel free to elaborate as much as you want as well. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I think with table tennis, the, the, the game itself means you need all aspects of fitness. You need endurance, you need speed, you need agility, you need reflex. So if you're thinking about it, you need to play table tennis. Without those um, components, it's going to be difficult for you to go to a different level, to the next level. If you're playing it for fun, it's okay. You can just stand there and just keep banging the ball. But if you want to take it to that next level, you need speed. So in fitness is very, very important. And I think that gets neglected. And what I think recently, most people are aware and that's been picked on. And I see more um, table tennis players working on their fitness, which is quite good. Yeah. Now, Phil, you, you're not a table tennis player. Am I right in saying that? I do play table tennis, but I won't be, I'm not as good as you. I do play in <laughs> <laughs> so, I so, play table tennis. I play um, in the Derby Premier League. Oh, not too shabby at all. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty good. good. I just wanted to know because, as you say, you're not at the so-called top level. Not at all. Is the perception down there that you don't need to be fit? Well, if you're playing in, in the league I'm playing, the guys can just get the ball back without being fit. Yes. So, I mean, for the young players, they look at that thinking, well, he's not moving, but he can get the ball back. But yes. that's not what we want to introduce to these young players. If you get, need to get to that next level, you need to get that ability to be able to move really quick, you need to be able to recover the endurance because some of this rally goes on for ages and ages because you can have the power, but if you can't reach to that ball without the endurance, you can't, you know what I mean? You're going to lose, miss out on that point. Um, Charlotte, what, how, how important is physicality for you? And can you give us a sort of a rough look at your regime and exactly what you do? Yeah, I think obviously it's it's good really that we can we can play a sport or we're involved in a sport where at a basic level you don't need a big level of fitness but I think obviously going into the professional game and something I learned growing up was to be a good table tennis player when you go look at the top Chinese players and you can see how strong their legs are how good their balance is and their reaction times um so yeah it's massive I think as a full-time player myself, um, and obviously I moved away from Wales, it has been tough because there's not always um, sort of that setup with a fitness coach. So a lot of it, I think people are doing it by themselves. I think more recently I've learned a little bit more about what I should be doing and, and maybe 
looking at the top players a little bit more and their fitness. So my days are normally when I am training full time, it's normally two training sessions. I like to run most days, mostly for mentally really, um, and then a gym session. I think when I was out in Sweden, I was doing a lot, a lot of strength work, whereas maybe in lockdown, I think I've been doing a lot more explosive things and high intensity workouts. And I have really seen sort of a change in my fitness. I think my fitness has improved definitely since being in lockdown and doing less less things with weights and just concentrating on body weighted things really. Yeah. Is, is part of that Charlotte to sort of avoid injury before competitions and stuff as well? Yeah, I think I've probably gained a lot of injuries from working in the gym. Um, I think from doing squats and deadlifts, I hurt my back quite a bit. So I think it was kind of a wake up call as well to realize that I don't need to always be trying to lift the heaviest weights. I don't think that it's really about that in table tennis. I think you do definitely need the explosive things, the jumps, the lunges, the fast sprinting movements. I think that's much more important than sort of heavy weight training anyway. So... uh are, yeah. are there any sorry are there are there any exercises any exercises that you would recommend for players out there that are sort of improving and you know to give them a little bit more explosive power a little bit more speed yeah i i like to do um a lot of jumps recently i've been doing a lot of stay work exercises and i've been really enjoying that i think that's good for the fast movement and not staying kind of on one foot for too long but i think it's really important in table tennis to have a strong core as well um, a lot of your power is generated from your core and the fast movements sort of revolve around your core moving fast so I think that is a big part of it as well so a lot of um, movement exercises around your core and sort of fast footwork movements really yeah. Ali? Yeah no I was just going on from that Charlotte because we had a, a little chat with somebody um, Des Douglas and uh, he said something very similar that he, he was he focused more on on the sprint side and the fastness side of things, and and not so and didn't really like the weights side of things. He he didn't really feel it benefited him so much that you know doing weights and and all that sort of stuff, and also explosive runs and uh, quick runs, short runs, that sort of stuff. Yeah, I think I kind of got to a stage where I was doing weights a lot of the time, and I I felt kind of heavy around the court, if that makes sense. That's I didn't feel like I was moving fast. I felt strong, but I didn't feel like I was able to move fast around the table, but whereas with doing sort of explosive work and high intensity, fast movements, I think it has benefited my game. That's lovely to hear. I've got a little question for you. So what it sounded like you didn't know what to do initially. Do you blame that on the initial uh, uh, foundations structure of table tennis inside your country or the UK? Um, or is that your fault? What would you I put that down to? I think it's a combination of both, really. Um, I mean, when you're in the hall, I'm sure you guys know yourself, when you're in the hall with a tra for a training session with a group of kids, you want to focus on getting as much table time as you can. Yes, right. I think that's something that I do still. I'm just like, yeah, I need that table time. When realistically, even as far as resting, resting is just as important sometimes as the hard work on the table and the gym work and maybe even just mentally going for a run, I think it is a big part of table tennis. And I think obviously it's great to have on table training, but I think if you can find a fitness coach that really knows a lot about table tennis and the table tennis specific movements, mm. I think it's that's still... a great benefit. Yeah. He's here. Book him, book him. <laughs> you book him now. Book him now. <laughs> yeah. no, no, I agree with what Charlotte's saying. It's quite good because um, I've been going to Draco, I've been observing them play table tennis and I'm thinking, okay, what do these kids need? Well, the coaches and do, did recognize that and mentioned, Phil, can you put something together? Phil Vickers, John Bellis contacted me and said, put some, some exercises together. So I didn't just, like what you said, there was no weight included. It's just body weight exercises, explosiveness, but also, you know, table tennis is short post as well. So you need that recovery time. So it's high intensity interval training because it's like, boom, 40 seconds, okay? You got to recover for the next shot. And over 40 seconds, you got to give 100% and then recovery time. So yes, I totally agree with that. So I've been putting my exercises together just to take them to the next level. And there's plenty. So that's brilliant. So what I'm thinking now is, should maybe someone like yourself produce a structured program 
that can go nationally across the board to clubs, to coaches. They can use it as a template to go forward. I think working with other coaches, that would be a great idea because I'm happy to do that with the support of the coaches. I, I'm quite comfortable and happy to do that. But you don't want to like, I would happily, happily do that, definitely. You, you're kind of saying you don't want to step on yeah. someone's... Yeah, I get that. But I'm thinking doing yeah. it as a, a, as a more of a national thing, meaning going through the governing, governing body and saying, look, here's a program that you can use inside your manual books. And then the, the, the coaches across the board can go, I have no idea about these physical things. But, oh, oh, look, in the manual, I can use some of these things. Yeah, I, I'll happily do that because I've been working and um, talking to Henry, Henry Otho, and because fitness is my passion. And I'm thinking, okay, well, my daughter's now played table tennis. I got back into table tennis because of my little, my little daughter. And I went on a level one coaching, level two coaching. And I thought, okay, well, how can I help her? So we, at home, I'm helping her, and now she's number two in England. And I'm thinking, right, wow, okay, it's working. And I focus on her fitness, and she's enjoying it. So now I'm thinking, how can I help others? It's not just about... It's everybody. That's what I like to do. I like to share my passion. And the thing about fitness is being passionate and being able to motivate them so they can know what you're actually trying to sell them. Because it's actually selling it. Like Shalom says, you need to embrace that in them. To say, I agree. you need that. If without that, you cannot get to that next level. And yeah. Spot on. Beautiful. It's the, uh, the early mindset of, of people playing table tennis is, is just get the ball on the table. You don't need to move too much. That's right. So I, I think it'd be lovely for clubs to actually be able to see stuff that you do, Phil, and, and say, oh, let's try this out with the kids, the same as they do with Ellie's videos and other people. You know, so it really inspires the kids to want to do that fitness side as well. Can we try and change the culture? You know, I play the broad and Charlotte will tell you the same. That, that they do warm ups, they do cool downs. It's, it's a very common theme across Europe and the world. But in England, the UK, for some reason, it's get in, take your bow, let's hit a few balls, and we go home. So I'm just trying to think, how can we change that mentality? I think it's quite hard as well because, you know, um, coaches in Britain generally are expected to do everything. They're, they've point. got to be a psychologist. They've got to be yeah. a, <laughs> someone to look after you. They've got to be a coach. They've got to be there if you've got a problem. Mom, dad, and brother, sister. Yeah. And as much as yeah they can be good at it all but are they really going to be really good at everything i think it'd be yeah. obviously in an ideal world it'd be nice to have a fitness coach yeah. the national coaches a psychologist and nutritionist yeah. i don't think it should be down to the coaches to kind of do all that but if there is a system in place where the coach can get a little bit of help or a little bit of insight and they're not kind of just making her up and trying their best mm. But I also am aware in the England um, squad, they actually big on the fitness. Yes, they are. You know, in the junior squad, because um, there is fitness, fitness, fitness. And yeah. I know about that one because... I think there's a bit of a... Yeah, I also know a little bit. I think there has to be a careful balance there. I do sometimes think they, the, the balance is not quite right, especially for young kids. We have to be a bit careful as to how much we push the fitness. Because fitness, let's be honest, you can get fit any time in your life. You can't get good at table tennis, like really good any time in your life. Once you're 20, 30, you know, you've kind of, you're going to start hitting the stumbling blocks. What are you trying to say, Ali? I'm not going to get any better. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, you're the youngest one here, man. Yeah, I kind of think a little bit as well um, from past experiences. When I would travel to Cardiff, maybe for like an hour session or a two hour session, I used to think, well, I can come home and do my own fitness trainer. I don't That's want awesome. that to be into my table time. So I think if all the players could potentially have something where they can do all their fitness training at home, obviously well, it takes a so. player to do that, but, and you can't really track it, but I think that is an ideal world for the coaches and for the players, really. Yeah, shut up. Like you say that, but it's just that motivation. You know, yeah. someone's got that drive. If you're yes, told, correct. it's boring. If you have someone telling you to do it, correct. and they're there, you will do it. You give that 100%. You sometimes give 110% because I'm there shouting. I want 10 more. Keep going. Don't stop. And keep relax. Going. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Yeah. Push you to that next level. Go home. When you're tired, that's it. I agree. And I actually think the, the way to solve that is to go, Charlotte, okay, right. Players, I want you to turn up 15, 20 minutes before. If you've got two hours to train, let's turn up before. Let's commit. 
and then we can still get our table time that we promised you. What part of the body would you focus on uh, with your sort of, you know, regime of fitness, if you like? So what parts of the body do you mainly focus on? And I ask that to uh, Charlotte. I think legs is a big one. Um, obviously strong legs, you're using your legs for most shots, you're using your legs um, for quick recovery, movement around the table. I think you generate a lot of power from your legs, but also, as I just said, I think core is a big one, um, which can be neglected a little bit. I think sometimes I think there's a lot of leg work and maybe quite a bit of arms. I think arm strength is maybe a given when you're doing sort of these exercises. Okay, it's important to have strong arms, but at the same time, I think that comes part of the parcel with some other exercises that you do. But I think getting that explosiveness from the legs and the core, I think that's something that you can work on and that can be maybe easily improved. And I think, yeah, that is the main part for me, the main part of the game, I think, that's important. And, then, and is there sort of like set routines that you, that you specifically do, you know, where where you work on that is there you know is there a sort of like a set routine that you that you try and sort of implement I've, so, I've sort of got um gym programs as i said and um yeah in lockdown i think i've learned a lot more about more explosive things and less about the weights and sort of standing there and doing squats or lunges i think um the explosive things are really beneficial and i think you do start to see the differences on the table when you do a lot more explosive work i think yes yeah, strength and endurance i think as I said, that's part of the parcel anyway. Endurance is something to me that I just think you should be fit. You should be fit if you're playing a, a sport full time. But with explosive power, I think that it's easy to work on. And I think you can improve a lot in a short period of time with doing table tennis specific movements and sort of reaction time exercises as well. So you think for even sort of maybe not just top, top players, but for improving players, it's, 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 it's a good thing to do. Yeah, definitely. I I do think even maybe like watching my granddad play and kind of the old people in the local club, you see them, they can always get their hand to the ball, but then they're falling all over the place. The arm is always going to reach out and try and reach the ball, but it's whether or not your legs are there for you to be balanced and to recover in a good way. And I think yeah. even from such a low level, you see people, you know, like crossing their legs over and falling over and like run into the ball rather than sidestepping. I think from such a small level, you can be so much better at that. I think if that's instilled from the start, the right movements, the right way to react, the right stance, I think that will just benefit you further and further down the line. That's brilliant. Cool. I mean, can I concur a little bit here? The, yeah. uh, I've seen some of the, the Chinese uh, work and uh, I, you could see the first thing they actually worked on was teaching them how to move their legs first. They didn't let them yeah. hold the bass. And what I really noticed very carefully, I did a bit of a study on it with the legs. And I noticed that the, when you watch the Chinese, like let's, let's say Ma Long, when he steps in, how efficient he is when he steps in, how efficient he is when he steps out. When you watch Timmerball, who's also of course world-class, but you could see the first thing he was taught was to play with his hand. Yeah. And his legs, when he moves in, is inefficient. He's found a way, and you, most of us found way, find ways, but he's not quite their level because he's n that little um, marginal gain makes a huge difference at that level. So when you watch him stepping in, he does like two or three or four steps before he steps in, where Marlon will do one or two maximum, and then he's in. And that's the difference. So, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's good. Yeah, no, it's good. But yeah, you do see you see loads of videos of of, of the the youngsters, and they and that's what they're doing. They're working on that that, that footwork side all the time, yeah. aren't they? It's yeah. just constant. Um, Phil, okay, how, yeah. how, what about from your perspective? Yeah, for your from my perspective, I think um, like Shalom says, um, more fo more focus on legs and core, but more core yeah. because. With the core, you can have good stance on the leg as well. Because if without the, the, the core, you cannot hold that statue. So it's more core work. And my focus is more core because that core gives you more explosive power from within. Okay. So my focus is more on core. Brilliant. So, so sometimes, sometimes you see, uh, you know, players sort of play a stroke and then they're standing up again, aren't they, Phil? 
It's like, it's like they can't even hold a position. They can't hold a position. Yeah. Yes. They can't hold a position. You, you can have strong legs, you can have all the definition and things, but if you don't have that core, that strong core, even with the rotation, because you need that core from that rotation yeah. and everything else. So. Well, this is actually, I wanted to, to make it clear in my mind as well. I felt that core was the fundamental, uh, the, the most important part because it allows you to do everything, allows you to use your arms, your legs, uh, and as you said, Ed, to, to stay low. And the legs yes. are definitely important. In, uh, but if we're really talking about the intricacies, I believe the core is the number one thing that people forget and don't work on properly. Uh, although I'm going to be slightly controversial here, if we're talking about physical, physical things, I believe the number one thing we should be working on is our eyes. And you can have discussions with uh, Stevie Brunskill about it, but that's a whole other subject. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. The core vision, the core vision is the training, isn't it? Vision, vision training. Vision training and top athletes yeah. do use it and it does help. It does work. And I use it myself and I've noticed uh, huge benefits, huge, huge benefits. So how do you work on that one then? How do you work on the vision? Well, you'll need to go on there uh, on, on a course, but uh, you work <laughs> on <laughs> Speak to Steve, isn't it? <laughs> Speak to Steve, but uh, like I give you a very simple example. If you hold both thumbs up and you move your eyes left and right as quick as you can, you'll see there'll be a big difference between my eye movement compared to probably, possibly yours because I've kind of trained it and my eye movement is quicker, which allows me then to track the ball much faster than so-called uh, Jimmy down the road. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why the tapeness players uh, have such uh, so much better uh, reaction speed and anticipation because they're using the eyes so much better than any other sport. Tapeness, for example, is used for uh, Formula One drivers, so it allows them to to quickly track things and analyze at very, very high speed through tape tennis. But we should be training off the table with our eyes as well. But that's, a, like I said, it's a whole other ball game. But it is a part of physicality that is neglected hugely. And I do think it's something that uh, should be looked into a bit more properly. And like me and Ed, we went on a course and we, I felt I learned a hell of a lot. And it's I very came good. Out, yeah. I came out very, very... Um, inspired and I thought okay here's a new marginal gain for one of my coaching uh, tools or repertoire whatever you want to call it yeah we don't need to say too much about that now do we <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 interesting though because if you stand next to a lot of table tennis players and just just focus on their eyes for for a couple of minutes you'll notice how they don't use their eyes properly and you'll spot it yourself if you watch I'm going to start looking at them in the eyes now. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll see the eyes going off in different directions and you're like, that's not where you're supposed to be looking when you play table tennis. So if I gave you a choice to choose between endurance and speed, explosive speed, uh, which one would you choose? As I said, I think endurance is a given. Um, obviously, if you're playing matches in a pro tour, for example, you play maybe one match in a day, but if you're playing in a Grand Prix and you can play, I don't know, 20, 30 matches in a day, then it's a different story. Yeah. You know, you kind of see a lot of the time good players are winning because they've got good endurance and they're fitter. Um, but I think in a pro tour, it, I probably would choose speed and explosive power um, if I could only have the one. But yeah, I just okay. think that endurance is a given Um it's not something that really needs to be looked at. I don't think in table tennis, um, you don't need to be able to run a marathon to play table tennis, really. You need to be fit. You need to have good fitness levels. You need to be able to perform for a two, three hour training session. Um, but I think, yeah, speed and explosive power, I think is the most important at the high level. Um, and yeah, as I said, just endurance is a given. And speed and explosive power, I think is the big biggest difference between the top players and the lower lower standard players i'm with you there i'm with you there definitely with you there although i have to say many times i won uh grand prix because of my endurance i wasn't of the skill level of the others but because i was fitter and i used to bounce in front of their eyes say, i'm super fit you're not gonna beat me <laughs> uh and and it won me many matches it won me many tournaments so and the endurance, I suppose, also kind of plays a part when you're talking about the pro tours. When you're playing a best of seven and you're going to 4-3 and you're both head-to-head -head going at it, the endurance does play a part, you have to be honest. Yeah, I do think endurance is a big thing, but I think psychologically, I think yeah. you need to be able to 
continue for a long period of time with a good psychological endurance rather than a physical endurance in a way. So I think if we're talking about psychological endurance, I think that's a massive thing, you know, keeping that concentration, nice. even keeping the concentration to 11 in one set. I think psychological endurance there is a huge thing. But if we're talking just fitness, then I would definitely say speed and explosive okay. power. No, I would, I would go with endurance as well. Though. The endurance, because the speed is good. But like you said, if you keep going on for, the, for a long day, you need that endurance. Mm-hmm. You know, because you said endurance is a given. Well, how do you get that endurance if you don't train it? Yep. You yeah. need to train that endurance. So given it's a given, you still need to train it. So you need to go on the runs. You need to do the skipping. Because yeah. skipping looks like something that's very easy. Not everyone can skip. You try and skip for like one minute, you're out of breath. If you're not used to it. Some people, the boxers can skip for like 15, 30 minutes. We try and skip for four or five minutes. We're out of breath. So my, my thing is like, you get skipping rope. It's only three pounds. Get yourself a skipping rope and get skipping. That improves your endurance without actually leaving your house to go for a run. It does. See, this is where I, I'm interested because from a coaching perspective, I believe both are extremely important. But yeah. I would like to know kind of, a bit better because I would like to see which one do I need to focus on a little bit more. And I agree with Charlotte in terms of the highest level at the moment, in my opinion, speed is probably the winner. Now it's, it's become greater than the spin and maybe power power is inside the speed. So we kind of put it together, but speed nowadays is becoming the real killer in table tennis. So we know it's very, very important, the high level, highest level, but, to get to the highest level, don't we need that insurance, endurance? Don't we need to be super strong, fit, and mentally, mental endurance as well? So this is where I'm agreeing with Phil and I'm agreeing with you, Charlotte. But I'm trying to see if, no, I, if I... It's good you're agreeing, but you're giving us a choice to choose one. Because yes. I you have to choose both. And yeah. I could choose both. Choose. Thank well, you. No, no, no. Choose one. Choose one. <laughs> I'm going to choose endurance and Charlotte's going to go for speed, but I want both. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 In terms of your training, you have to make sure all the kids have the speed, they have this flexibility, they have the agility to move, and they have the endurance is very important. Because this, this rally, the competitions, the nationals, you win in group stage, you've got to go next. You win that quarter final, you've got to go next to the semis. If you need to keep moving, you need all that. But this is where it's very, it becomes very important endurance, because it doesn't matter how much you have the explosive speed, if you don't have the endurance, the speed will go down, and then you will lose. You will lose. So... I don't think you can choose one, though. Because well, okay. I think they are both interlinked. In yes. Some area, okay, so if you could choose one at one period of time, which one would it be? And then you can move forward. So let's say if I'm a beginner, would you choose speed first or endurance? And if I'm an elite, would you choose endurance or speed? At elite, I would choose um, speed and power because, okay, you might be able to pick up the balls from our longs for and going past you all day long but if you can't react and be fast with balls coming at you then you're just picking the balls up. <laughs> That's brilliant, I love but that. Then, yeah, at a young age I think you've trained for ages at a young age, you play non-stop, even just messing around sure. and I feel like that's where you build up your endurance and obviously going to the Grand Prix, the Nationals tournaments where you're playing under 11s, 13s, 15s, all in one day, I think yeah. that's where the endurance is built in a way. Nice. I think, I, th- I think another key point here is that if you work on your speed early on, you're losing your consistency, you're losing your shape, and you're losing your technique. Mm. So endurance, endurance has to come first. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah. yeah. Well summed, Ed. I love that. Also, Ellie, um, you, you asked me um, about table tennis and how I lost my weight just playing table tennis. <laughs> it probably was picking up the ball. <laughs> Charlotte she reminded you, has she? She reminded me, yeah. yeah it's probably just is, picking up the ball a lot. Is that because you wanted to hit the ball too fast all the time, Ali? No, because they were all hitting it past you. <laughs> no, they were just going past was, me all the time. He was oh, going okay. pick them up. <laughs> I wasn't quick enough, but I got my endurance back picking up the ball. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, uh, Charlotte, Charlotte, you made a point before about um, a really, really good point, actually, about psychological endurance. endurance yeah. Is. Is there a connection, do you think, bet- be, uh, between yeah. psychological ins- uh, insurance, endurance and physical. Physical, physical endurance? Because I, I, I tend to think that there has to be a connection there. I think there's a connection with any type of yep. fitness and psychology. Um, 
at the end of the day, you can be the fittest person in the hall. You can be the fittest person in the gym, the strongest person in the gym. But at the same time, if you can't control your performance anxiety, you're not going to be able to perform the movements that you've practiced in the training hall. You're not going to be able to do that under pressure. And I see so many people in training halls who are unreal at practicing. Yeah, well, champions. They're so good at practicing. They're so fit, so good in the gym. But it comes to a match and they choke. And that's not just mentally you're choking. Your body is choking. It's, it's restricting you from performing at a normal level how you would in the practice hall. So you can be fit in the practice hall and you can have the best endurance in the practice hall or in a match. But at the same time, if you haven't got any sort of psychological strength, there's no point. You may as well be the fattest and fittest person in the hall because if you can't do it mentally, then you'll never be able to do it physically as well, I don't think. So, Charlotte, do you feel sort of less nervous if you have a really good sort of warm-up? Say yeah. you go for a little run and stuff like that before? Yeah, I think generally if I know that I'm feeling fit, um, if I feel like I've been training well, if I've been doing good fitness sessions... I think mentally that helps me. I feel like I'm I'm strong physically and now therefore makes me strong mentally as well. Yeah. Um so I think it is connected and it just it gives you confidence. When you feel fit and you feel stronger, you are more confident generally in yourself and I think that gives you confidence on the table and in the matches as well. I agree. Definitely. Charlotte is uh, every coach's dream you are. We <laughs> want more players like you. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I, I, I just look at Phil and how, how he just walks all, all around the place smiling the whole time. And, oh, you. you know, no, no, but the, the, inspirational. the fitness that you do has a, a massive effect on, on your lifestyle and, and, and other things as well, doesn't it, Phil? You know? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. It's <laughs> fitness saved my life. It's difficult to explain. That's another subject. But so it's like growing up, I didn't smile much. Now, it all helped me because... My background, I'm a fighter. I did karate. I was a karate champion, every champion in Sierra Leone. I'm from Sierra Leone. And but that time, it's all fight, fight, fight. And you go to take being an athlete to the next level. So you go to train to be your best. And there was someone there to help and guide me. Yeah, but I did not, um, I did not appreciate it at the time. Now I'm in a position where I can help others to give them the same thing I had. So it's like, so I'm thinking, oh, that guy was helping me for free. Yeah. He didn't have to. So, hey, let me give you my time. Let me try and help you. Let me help someone like someone helped me. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just um, passing on. That's why my, my T-shirt I wear is mad, making a difference. And I'm fitness with a smile because I'm happy to do so because it's my passion. Yeah. That's, that's, that's nice. Yeah. That's yeah. why I try to help others. I love it. I've been doing fitness since the age of nine and it's helped me in a way, just like Charlotte. So if you have that, if you feel you fit, you believe it, there's no nerves. It's mentally strong there. It, it just prepares you. So that's what we need to try and get all these kids and all these players to that level where they feel fit and then they can go in there and perform to that high level. It don't matter who's in front of them. They just believe they can do it. But you give your best, win or lose. Someone has to lose. But if you give your best, you leave the table thinking, I've done my very best. And the better person won on the day. I, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people realise that if you, if you have a good workout, you start releasing a lot of sort of endorphins and various chemicals. And it takes the nerves away quite a lot. You know, Woo! I've got a good little story about that. Oh, don't <laughs> We're listening, Ali. But remember, <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I turned up for a league match once, right? And this guy was late. He then said to me, "Look, can you just wait a minute because I need to do a run?" And I said, "What do you mean?" And he said, "Well, I'm do I need. I always have a run before I play, but I'm running a bit late. So can I do a run?" And he, anyway, he ran. Literally, I said, "Yeah, okay, go for it." So he ran down the he ran down to where the pub was about half a mile away and all the way back up again, and then said, "Right, I'm ready now." And of course, I was just laughing my head off, thought, you know, and he absolutely smashed me. <laughs> <laughs> so, because yeah. you, didn't, you didn't take him seriously, that's why. Because you're thinking, yeah. "Is this the clown?" You didn't take him seriously. I didn't take him seriously. I just thought, you know, but he he was he wasn't mentally prepared. I certainly wasn't. But by the time he got back, he was mentally prepared. You know, prepared mm. physically. And he absolutely wiped the floor, mate. Yeah. So next time he did it, I went for a run with him. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you won that time. <laughs> I won. Hey, nice one. <laughs> yeah, so that was that.
I think another point as well is I've seen a lot of people in lockdown, um, like even some of my friends in or my teammates in Spain, they haven't had access to a table through lockdown. Yeah. And their, them doing fitness is obviously a huge boost. And I think mentally it's so good for you to do exercise. I mean, I've got a table in the garden, but I've hardly been able to use it. And I do think doing all the fitness sessions and not just staying in bed and kind of whinging about the fact that we can't play table tennis. I think getting out and doing fitness has just been like, a massive relief for everyone really even non-athletes non-table tennis players i think everyone has benefited a lot just from doing a bit of fitness through lockdown yeah definitely spot on oh, it's amazing uh, i think all of i think the the main lessons from today really are how important where our bodies are and if we don't take care of our bodies then we're not going to be able to perform at a higher level we can not everyone can be elite but if we don't push our bodies a little bit we're not going to be able to to gain access to to more and unfortunately we're going we're coming into a world of uh, screens and it's becoming really um how can i say it in a nice way it's becoming very bad for our uh, youth and we us especially us uh, who are the athletes have got to do our very best to try and uh, showcase how important fitness truly is and must continue through time yeah 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 cool. do we have any more uh, quick uh, questions or anything or any other things we'd like to add on to today's session before i close up yeah one thing yes um you know you were talking about sort of like a routines and stuff like that so for you uh, for ed and, and and ellie do you what do you do with your coaching then you know when do you have sort of routines like that that focus on uh core and and stuff like that do you do stuff like that brilliant I thought, uh ed go ahead please yeah. it for me it depends on the on the level of player so we, with beginners tend to do like when we spoke about endurance maybe a little bit more running try not to go too hard on them but yeah i mean similar to what we've already been discussing you know, you try to do a bit of core work, make sure you're working the legs. And as they get better, tend to try and work on some s sort of quicker movements and, and, and various things. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm in agreement a little bit with Ed here. You have to be very careful as to who you do fitness with. You can lose a lot of players because yeah. of fitness. Yeah. And that's somewhere where I was saying a little bit about the Tetris England. I think sometimes they their line is not quite right and not, they need to be a bit more efficient in that respect, in my opinion. Um, there's better ways of going about it, but that's another subject. Having said that, um, fitness for me is a very, very important thing, and I, I encourage it a lot. Now, it, de it depends on who I'm working with, but I will always uh, show them how it can benefit them for in the long run uh, by showing them, you know, the 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 top athletes inside the sport and saying, look, you cannot do this if you don't have these uh, physicalities. And often just by seeing the kids will interpret it in their minds and go, okay, I understand. I need to put in the work and get there. Uh, now in terms of routines, uh, yeah, I, I, I try my best to, to set routines, but I, what I also try and do is make it match realistic. And I think that's another big element that people make a bit of a mistake of. They, they run around in circles and they do, maybe sometimes they go to the gym and lift heavy weights. And this is unnecessary movements for a table tennis player. You've got to try and be um, physically specific to, to movements that are tailor-made for the game. Mm -hmm. And once you get that right, then everything were, uh, starts to flow a bit better. And ultimately, the number one, if you can, make it fun like Phil does. And oh, relax. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And also, it's also important to mention about um, the fitness. There's different levels. Yeah. So let's say, for example, if I was training Ed and I'm thinking, okay, Ed is okay. Ed can do it, but not as much as Charlotte. I would push Charlotte to a different level. Yeah. There's different fitness levels for different individuals. So if I know Ali can do it, Ali, we're going extreme and it's no mercy to show you. You know what I mean? I'm making sure it's no mercy. Then I'll take it easy on it. But for you, <laughs> it's extreme, no mercy. 
So that's it's just it's just different levels. So you know who you, you're training, and yeah. then you, you know you got to push that athlete to a different level depending on the athlete's ability. That's fantastic. Right. Spot on. I agree with that. Brilliant. What what about for what about for local clubs and things like that, where you've got sort of local coaches and things that not necessarily like pro coaches like like yourselves, but 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 you know what what should they be doing? I think most of these um, clubs have, um, most of them, they have level one coaches and yeah. they teach them that basic table tennis fitness. So footwork, footwork drills and things that are cones. So I would assume, I'm just assuming, I'm not quite sure. I know Draco applied that because you have different coaches at Draco and they have, um, for the kids, they have different type of fitness level for the intermediate and senior. I'll do that fitness coaching for them. And that's okay. it. For the younger ones, they have, Joe Green and other people that will do those fitness, so they'll make it a bit simpler. They will have something in place. Okay. You have, as a level one coach, you should have or know something about fitness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I, I haven't done the level one. Uh, does it have fitness in there? Yes, it does. It okay. have fitness. Yeah, but for the thing is, if you're not done level one, you are an, an elite table tennis player, so your knowledge surpasses all that level one um, stuff we've done. So. Ellie, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes <laughs> more often than not, but okay. Um, hey, that's it. Well, Ali, actually, I'd like to quickly touch on what you said. I, I think, like I said, I think we should try and find a very basic structure for everyone to kind of have a little guideline. Okay, right. When I turn up to the hall, yeah, that's I what do, I was trying to get. I at. do a minimum yeah. of seven minute warm up. Yeah, you know, yeah, the body's got to warm up. It's like you, you don't go into, you don't buy a Ferrari and then go right, turn it on, boom. It will yeah. not perform at its highest level. Yeah, you've got to warm it up, got to tune it, you got to do what you got to do, and then you get the performance. So, yeah. we've got to change that culture and thy psyche uh, across the board, and try and have everyone seen. Okay, doing a little jog, a little warm up, a couple of little physical things. It's a good thing. I'm not surprised to, to know that clubs don't already do that. Yeah. No, no. A lot yeah. of clubs, no. Very rare. It's very rare. rare. Your club, but yes, but it's yeah, very rare. We, 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 don't, we don't really do it at our club at all. We it's a rare quite, thing to see. Uh, uh, you yeah. know, uh, as you know, Phil, I go across the country yeah. to yeah. many clubs and I promise you it's a, it's a rare And we do have see. kids at our clubs as well. So, you know, they're coming in and I know that there's some kids on, on, on some clubs and they'll come in and and it's it's very sort of hit and miss what they're really doing. They're going and playing a few shots and stuff like that, and learning the, to learning to play. So it's it's just touching back what what Charlotte was saying about you know that little regime, you know that little that little sort of uh, explosive little regime. And I, and I was just wondering whether I wonder whether it could be put together like a little you know like a little pathway map, if you like, of this is what you do, guys, when you come into the hall, like Ellie yeah, was just yeah. saying, you know, and just something simple, but but. But right across the board, you know. I think it's hard from like um, from my perspective when I go into clubs that I went to kind of when I was a child, um, and you see them, they all just want to go in and hit the ball. Yeah. yeah. A lot That's of the exactly. players in the clubs, you need to differentiate the ones who actually want to be on the pathway to play for the national teams, That's right. and the ones who are just there f for a bit of enjoyment. And I think it's such a hard thing to change something that's happened for, for such a long period of time. If you are the coach, it's hard to kind of say to your 50-year-old adults and the kids <laughs> who are 16 who've been playing since they were nine, no, now actually we're going to be doing a long warm-up and we're yeah. completely changing the set. And I think if you start a club, that needs to be done from the start. And yeah. a lot of the clubs, especially in Wales, I think have been going on for years and it would be such a drastic change to to go into something like doing a fitness session in the in the training and in the club training. But maybe not so much for the youngsters though, maybe maybe yeah. more targeted at the youngsters. Right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think even if you started with the ones coming through, the really yeah. young ones, then yeah. I think maybe the older ones will start to see, oh, that looks quite interesting, or they seem to be improving at a faster rate. So maybe they would want to get involved then as well. Yeah, that's where I was sort of going. I do also think that uh, if we don't start, it will never happen. And secondly, yeah. I remember when I played in France, I used to play in London Progress, which at the time was considered or was the best club in England. We never warmed up. We got on the table, we played. And then I went to France, and all of a sudden, the culture hit every single person, whether you're 60, 10, 20, whatever you are, they 
came in the hall and they warmed up. They were all doing warm. And I was like, anyone want to play? They're like, no, warm up first. It was, <laughs> it was a culture. Culture, yeah. yeah. It was a culture and it was a strong culture and it still is. If you go anywhere in France, any club, warm up and cool down is extremely important. I remember after the training, I was like, who wants to play? And they're like, no, cool down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, we have to start it, first of all. And I agree, it's difficult. But I do believe if every coach goes on the so-called level one, level two course and they're told, right, this is what you should be starting your, your sessions with, then every coach kind of knows the direction they're going and they can start to build it over the next 10 years, whatever it may be. Yeah, it's definitely down the level one and level two. But are, are you, are you uh, pushed into doing it or is this is just the fitness? Are you actually said, this is what you guys should be doing? No, well, yes, on the course. Because they, they mention it on the, on the course, what you should be doing before you start the session because it's one of the okay. criteria as ah, part of good. assessment. assessment okay. So say, you do a warm-up drill, whatever warm-up, and then you go into your drills. Table, table time. Oh, well, that's a positive thing. Okay, so maybe they are starting to implement it. Good. Yeah. All right. Okay, guys. I think that's I just... also been neglected, I would say, is flexibility. Mm. Massive, the, yes. There's fitness, there's core, but then you need to be able to be flexible, the reflex and everything else. I've seen guys having, oh, I've got cramp and everything else because they're not flexible. They're not... Um, you know, agile. they're not agile enough. That's so very, very true. Flexibility needs to be addressed as well. That's so true. In fact, uh, when I used to work at Harefield, we used to have a professional gymnastic team and a ballet uh, coach, professional coaches right next to me uh, in the hall. And I remember clearly that I used to send my players to the ballet and to the gymnastics. Precious. They used to hate me but they loved me for it down the line. They were like, look, I can do the splits. I can get yeah, to the pirouette. I can't normally get to yeah, the pirouette. <laughs> and in fact, they, they took the, the concept for me from the table tennis and they used it for the, we also had the Watford Football uh, Academy there. And all of a sudden, all the Watford boys started to do the ballet. You should see these kids, you know, I want to be gangster and they're doing the splits. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> it was so good. So yeah, definitely flexibility is a massive part of we, we also neglect and have to think about guys thank you so much for everything thank you for coming on the show and giving us some wonderful insights some uh, inspirational things as well from both of you and Thanks, i'd like to tell everyone that we also have what's called uh, a balls and all after party which basically means once we've launched this video then we will give you a link to the so-called after party where if you guys want to join us as well, you can. And people who watched it can come on there and further discuss what we spoke about today. So um, please join us for that. And in the meantime, it's uh, good night, goodbye, and thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you guys. Yes, thank you. Thanks thank you very much. Thank you. Brilliant. Sorted. Don't worry, I'll be editing loads out. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs>